Same goes for snacks. Have one to two go-to snacks to have if you really, like, really, really need a snack. Now, my ultimate goal for my clients is to try to reduce any type of, type of eating outside of a meal as much as possible because, you know, as much as it's hard for us to, to think about because we've been so brainwashed into thinking snacks are important or being hungry is like the devil, you really don't need snacks between meals. If you're kind of the average nine to five desk worker type of person, you really don't need to eat more than three times a day, all right? If you're having a decent sized, calorically dense and well-rounded balanced meal, snacks should be irrelevant. Um, if you're someone who works out often, you know, four to five times a week, a snack might be a necessary component to keeping your calories up and, and fueling your performance. But if you hardly do anything outside of sit at a desk and go home, sit at home and watch TV, you don't need a snack, all right? You probably don't even need three huge meals anyway. You, you might even need two, and you might even find that you don't even eat breakfast because you're just not hungry. So that's a totally different video for you know metabolism and you know activity and stuff like that. But if you have to have a snack, have one to two go-to snacks that are on the healthier end. Maybe you buy a protein bar that is recommended by you know me or somebody who really knows what they're talking about. Um, and you have a banana with that, or maybe you have some trail mix, right? That has maybe some beef jerky in it for some extra protein, or you know has good um, quality nuts and seeds and even fruits like raisins and you know whatever else that you want to put in it. But have a one, you know, have a go-to snack so that you're not like going to the vending machine and just grabbing a Snickers and going, well, I got to eat something because my blood sugar is low. It's like no, that's that's not how it works. You have to be more mindful about what you choose to eat. All right, it's not just calories, it's nutrients, it's how it affects your, your insulin, your blood sugar, all these things matter and you can make it so much easier for yourself if you just prioritize eating whole foods, eating fruits, vegetables, proteins, you know, whatever mix that you want. And by the way, when I'm saying proteins and I'm talking about meat, if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, I'm not excluding you, all right? You can do your own version of what I'm talking about. My point is, is that no matter what you subscribe to when you eat, focus on whole foods. And if your snacks are going, if you're gonna have snacks, make sure it's a whole food source, okay? All right, so the next one might be a little bit obvious, but it needs to be something that's kind of, that you need to be remember, which is commit to eating what you make, all right? Don't take your meal, don't put all that hard work into meal prepping, and then go to work and fall victim to somebody bringing in food for, for work, or there's a the seventh birthday party this month, or you know, your coworker who goes to lunch every single day invites you for the third time this week and you're just like, you feel socially obligated to go because you don't want to hurt his or her feelings and you're like, uh, what do I do? You have to commit and be willing to say no to things in order to have something like consistency. Um, if people are getting down on you for trying to improve your health, spend less time with those people, all right? They're only making your life worse. Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't go out to work or work lunches. Like I'm not saying you can't go out to lunch with your coworkers every now and then, but if you're going five days a week and you're not trying to maximize the healthy versions of those meals, then you're doing yourself a disservice and that person is kind of enabling the process. You don't want to get tied into that. One or two days a week, not going to kill you, but those other days of the week, you need to commit to what you make. And sometimes making food and bringing it is a commitment within itself because you don't want to have to waste that money, right? Nobody wants to buy something and then go complete to waste, right? So sometimes just the act of committing to doing some type of meal prep doesn't force you to eat it, but you feel in, you know, with lack of a better word, obligated to eat that food. And hopefully if you thought about it long enough, you like the food that you make. You shouldn't be eating food you don't like. Um, that's just silly and it doesn't make any sense. All right, so um, next tip is exchange meals and snacks when needed, right? Again, I'm not saying that when you pick one to two different meals per meal time that you're obligated to that for the rest of your life, but try to stick with it for you know three to four weeks. And then when you need to create some variety and you're willing to put the effort into changing things, do it, right? Don't marry one uh, type of breakfast or one type of lunch or one type of dinner for the rest of your life create variety where you need it, okay? Um, you, what you might actually find is that by sticking to one or two different types of meals per meal time, you actually find that 
it's really a lot easier and not like killing you not to have a ton of variety because you're getting results. You're staying consistent, you're making nutrition simple and you're actually getting results. That's going to feel pretty motivating even if your variety isn't like what it used to be when you were going out to lunch every single day and having different types of food from all over the world every single week, right? So exchange meals and snacks when you need to, but don't make it such an overbearing process that it ruins your consistency, all right?